Hello everybody, in our series of lectures on basic electronics, learning by doing, let us move on to the next one. Before we do that, let us recapitulate what we discussed in our previous lecture. You might recall, we discussed about the applications of operational amplifiers, more specifically on the different mathematical operations that can be performed using the operational amplifier. As you know, I already mentioned to you that the very name operational amplifier comes from this capability of this amplifier, so that I can use it for performing different types of mathematical operations on the input voltage. The examples as you can see on the screen, a summing amplifier, multiplication by a constant, and then we also looked at some applications of the summing amplifier like the digital to analog converter and the difference amplifier. We, we will continue our discussion on the mathematical operations. You, can, you may recall that multiplication by a constant is basically a very simple amplifier, voltage amplifier. V output is some k times the V input where the k is a constant which is we call as the gain. So, this a very simple amplifier could in principle be called a mathematical operation. It is performing a mathematical operation namely multiplying a given input with a constant value. The, you also saw how we can perform summing or addition use of two voltages, input voltages using an operational amplifier. So, the output voltage will be a constant multiplied by the two inputs V1 plus V2 in a typical case. You can have more than two inputs also, you can have multiple inputs in principle. Only condition being that the output voltage has got a limitation in terms of the VCC supply, the plus and minus uh, power supply voltages of the operational amplifier. We also discussed another configuration which is basically a difference amplifier or differential amplifier where the output voltage is the difference between the two input voltages V1 and V2. It can be proportional to V1 minus V2 or V2 minus V1 or it could be a with a factor K multiplication factor K. So, you can have a difference amplifier in that sense that the difference will be amplified also. So, these are the other operations. We will also see how integration and differentiation can also be performed. Before we do that, I, want, I just showed you one type of a difference amplifier in the previous lecture. So, the type 1 is what I have shown on the screen now. You have already seen this. So, it has got two inputs V1 and V2. You have R11 and R2, R12 and R1 as the resistors connected in the circuit, the output voltmeter measures the output voltage. So, we also derived an expression if you recall in the previous lecture, how the output voltage is equal to minus R2 by R1 within bracket V1 minus V2 or V1 difference V2, where R2, R1 are the R2 here feedback resistor and R1 here. Even though I have shown this as different R11 and R12, they can be the same and this R2 and this can be same. Therefore, you will get minus R2 by R1 times V1 difference V2. The input difference by the 
two signals v1 and v2 you will is is amplified in this case by a factor given by r2 by r1 so if i have r2 as 100k and r1 as 10k i will get a gain of 10 if i have r2 100k and r1 1k i will have a gain of 100 etc so it is possible for us to have a gain factor here by the choice of r2 and r1 and of course there is a minus sign which shows that there will be a inversion depending upon which voltage is larger. For example, if V2 is larger V2 minus V1 will also become negative then you will get effectively a positive output. If V1 is larger than V2 you will get a negative output right. The, you can also implement the same difference amplifier by using two op amps where first op amp is used as a simple inverter. See the addition the subtraction can be performed as an addition. If I want A1 minus A2 what I can do is I can perform A1 plus something where the something is actually an inverted value of A2 that is I, I will have first A2 converted into minus A2 and then I will perform an addition with A1 which is equivalent effectively to A1 minus A2. So that is a trick I am going to play here. In the previous circuit if you go back you can see this is given to the inverting amp input V1 and V2 is given to the non-inverting input therefore this will be coming out as minus constant multiplied by V1 this V2 input will come out as plus constant multiplication and V2. So what you get effectively the super uh, the addition of these two will be uh, something proportional to V1 minus V2. In the pre present case where I am going to talk about type 2 difference amplifier what I have done here is the first one that you see on the screen is a simple inverter. So you have a V1 you have an R you have also R and the feedback and the other input the non inverting input is grounded therefore you know this is a very simple inverting amplifier we have already seen it also earlier. So the output will become this is R this is R the gain is 1. So, but because it is given to the negative or the inverting terminal the output will be minus of whatever is the input. So, what I get at V1 prime will be minus V1. So, what this amplifier has done is simply to invert the input voltage V1 into minus V1 that is all. Now, what I do is if you look at the second configuration using the second op amp it is just nothing but a simple summing amplifier which we are already familiar. So you have one V1 here, you have V2, these two are added that is what you get at the output depending upon the values of R. Here again I chose all the R to be equal and therefore there will be a gain factor of 1. So what is going to happen? V1 prime plus V2 prime will be the output voltage. But V1 prime we have already seen because it is an inverter is minus V1. Therefore V1 minus V1 plus V2 will be the output or output will be V2 minus V1. So effectively what we have done is we have just inverted one of the input and added using a summing amplifier the two inputs after inversion and the other one V2 together. So that is the trick that we will play here that is exactly what I have explained here V1 prime is nothing but minus V1 and so V2 plus V1 prime is nothing but V2 minus V1 because V1 prime is minus V1 and so V output will be V2 plus V1 prime due to the summing amplifier that is V2 minus V1. Here there is no multiplication factor because I have uh, consciously chosen all the values of resistors to be equal and therefore the con multiplication factor or the gain becomes unity 1. Right now having seen that we can perhaps go down to the demonstration table and try to uh, perform the difference amplifier. We have already done the difference amplifier corresponding to the type 1. Now we will move to the so type 2 and we will try to see whether the circuit works in the way we expect it to work. Here I have the subtractor you can see the same circuit which I just explained this is the first operational amplifier with the normal inverter configuration and the second op amp here is in the summing mode. So this V1 
is first inverted as minus v1 here and that minus v1 and v2 are added by using the summing amplifier here. If you look at you can see the resistors I have used in all the case are all 10 k therefore, the gain factor becomes 1 in all the situation. So, the actual circuit you can see on the breadboard you have the first IC here and you have the second IC here both are 741 op amp and you can see all the resistors that I have used are all 10 k from the color code and you can see this one is wired as a simple inverter and this is wired as a summing amplifier and the output is monitored by this multimeter at the extreme right. Now, this is a multimeter which measures the second input corresponding to an input from this power supply and this multimeter measures the input from this voltage source which is a DC voltage source which is also capable of variation. So, this, this measures this voltmeter measures the output from this voltage source and that is given as V1. This output from this power supply is given as V2 and that is value is measured here and the output is measured by this multimeter. Now, let us have a look at the values. I have kept here 300 milli volts and I must perhaps you must be able to observe a value of 300 milli volts 313.6 millivolt in this multimeter corresponding to this input. And here the input is measured by this multimeter as 220.22 volts 0.22 volts which corresponds to 220 millivolt. So, 220 millivolt and 313 millivolt you have to find the difference and it will be the output voltage as measured here it is around 940, 95 millivolts. So, it should be around close to 100. So, it is about 95 milliamperes. If there are some differences in the actual magnitude that I have already explained to you is because these resistors are not 1 percent resistors or very precise resistors. They do have a tolerance of about 5 percent to 10 percent and therefore, there will be a slight variation in the actual value of the resistors that we have used and therefore, you see them to be not exactly equal to what you expect because of the small variation in that, but it is very close and reasonably uh, agreeable. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to change one of the input. It is now presently showing 313 millivolt. I am going to increase by one more. So, it becomes around 413 millivolt. Now, our 0.413 volts and this is 0.22 volts. So, the difference should be around 200 millivolt and you can see the output is around 192.7 or 5. So, you can see the difference between these two is what you get at the output. I again increase by one more stage. So, now it becomes uh, 500 and now I should increase the level of voltage here. So, this is now 500 millivolts approximately this is 200 millivolts. So, the difference should be around 300 millivolts and you get 0.292 volt which is equivalent to nearly 300 millivolts. So, you can see the two input voltages are subtracted and the result is the difference between the two inputs in this case 300 millivolts. So, it is possible for us to implement a subtractor using two op amps instead of one op amp as we saw in the earlier case. One, uh, one op amp here is performing the inversion, the second op amp is performing the summing. Therefore, after inverting one of the input you add with the second input to obtain the difference between the two inputs. That is a trick that we play here. Thank you. Having seen, having seen the demonstration, now let us move on to the next circuit which is a slightly modified version of the earlier circuits that you have seen. Here what we are going to see is a new circuit in which I can I am using both the non inverting input and the inverting input as I used in the first case of the subtractor that I showed you. So, you except that I have used multiple inputs on both the nodes both at the inverting input and at the non inverting input you see I have used multiple inputs. There are V1 and V2 connected to 
the inverting terminal V3 and V4 connected to the non inverting terminal and this is otherwise very similar to the first difference amplifier that we discussed earlier. Now I have got different values of resistors for V1 it is R1, for V2 it is R2, R3 and R4 and RF is the feedback resistor and R5 is the resistor which is connected to the ground from the non inverting input. We should measure the output. So what will be the gain of this amplifier with so many inputs? V1, V2 are connected to the inverting input and therefore the output is going to be minus RF by R1 times V1 or minus RF by R2 times V2 depending upon which one is connected. So that is the gain corresponding to the resistors that I connected. With reference to non inverting input, V3, V4 are not directly connected to the non inverting input. If you understand, if you recall the discussion that we had on the superposition theorem, you can see here when V3 alone is up connected, then we connect V4 to ground, V2 to ground, V1 to ground, everything else is connected to ground, only V3 are applied. So in that case, V3 is going to be divided by R3 and the parallel combination of R4 and R5. So what I am going to get is V3 multiplied by this effective resistance which is R4 parallel R5 divided by R3 plus R4 parallel R5. So that is the factor by which V3 will be reduced and that will be applied at the non inverting input. So that will be amplified by a factor which is given by RF divided by 1 plus R of by R1 that will be the gain factor corresponding to this. Similarly for V4 this V3 will be grounded therefore R4 and R3 parallel to R5 will divide the voltage V4 before it is being applied at the non inverting input. So I will perhaps explain to you that in one case R4 parallel R5 divided by R3 plus R4 parallel R5 will be the factor by which the input will be multiplied before it is applied at the non inverting input. In the other case corresponding to V3 and V4, R3 parallel R5 divided by R4 plus R3 parallel R5 will be the factor by which that voltage will be applied at the non inverting input. So but for that the rest of the equation is very simple, output voltage is nothing but A1V1 plus A2 V2 plus A3 V3 plus A4 V4 where V1, V2, V3, V4 are the voltages applied, A1, A2, A3, A4 are the gains corresponding to the voltage if that alone being applied rest of the thing being uh, grounded. So by using superposition theorem we can obtain values of A1, A2, A3, A4 and then we can obtain the output voltage. Having said that you know what is A1, A1 is going to be minus R of by R1, A2 is going to be minus R of by R2 because they are all applied to inverting inputs in the, in the previous case. V1, the A1 factor comes from R of by R1 factor because I am applying to the inverting input. Similarly V2 is uh, multiplied by R of by R2 and so minus R of by R2 times uh, the input voltage is what I will get when I connect to the uh, V2 input that gain corresponds to A2. For A3 because it is a non inverting input I must get a gain of 1 plus R of by something. The something here is R1 parallel R2 because R1 parallel R2 will uh, both will become grounded so that parallel value will have to be taken into account multiplied by the factor which is used because of the dividing for voltage divider at the input. R4 parallel which about which I already explained to you, R4 parallel R5 divided by R3 plus R4 parallel R5. So this is a factor fraction of the voltage that will be applied at the non inverting input and the gain of the non inverting amplifier is 1 plus R of by R1 parallel R2 because you find I give V1 alone, uh, I, I give V3 alone all the other things are grounded. So V1 is grounded, V2 is grounded that means R1 and R2 will come in parallel. So the effective resistance is uh, gain is 1 plus Rf by the parallel value of R1 and R2. 
the parallel value of R1, R2 is what we refer as R1 parallel R2. Rf divided by R1 plus R2 plus 1 will be the gain due to the non unitary amplifier and this is due to the voltage divider that I have at the input and therefore total gain is a product of these two terms. Similarly, for the next input corresponding to V4, the A4 gain will be identically like that except that here R3 will be replaced by R4 and R4 will be with R3 etcetera. So, this is the gain once we get the gain or if you know all the input voltages we can measure or calculate the output voltage by this expression which is by the principle of superposition. Now, having said that it is a simple exercise we will try to do where we have given values for the various resistors R1 is 1K, R2 is 2K, R3 is 3K and R4 is 4K 1, 2, 3, 4 is are the values of resistors. The feedback resistor is 6K and this resistor is 5K. Now, what is the gain of the each of the channel? These are 4 channels here V1, V2, V3 and V4. What is the total gain and what is the gain of each of the channel? Actually what they want is a voltage gain of each of the channel. We already know how to calculate by using those expressions. So, you can see A1 is minus Rf by R1, this is my Rf, this is my R1 minus Rf by R1 and therefore, here minus Rf is 6 kilo ohms, R1 is 1K minus 6 kilo ohm by 1K therefore, uh, a1 is minus 6. A2 is equal to minus Rf by R2 and the Rf is minus 6k again, 6k again the minus sign comes because of the inversion and R2 is 2k. Therefore, minus 6k by 2k gives me a factor minus 3. So, the channel gain for the second is minus 3, the gain of the first channel is minus 6. This is rather straightforward, no problem because minus R of by R1. But when we come to the non inverting case, you find the expression becomes slightly more complicated, but it is not very difficult. It is actually for A3 Rf divided by R1 parallel R2 plus 1. Rf is 6k, R1, R2 are 1k and 2k. So, the parallel value of 1k and 2k you should find out and divide 6k by that value and then add 1 this will be the gain exclusively and this is the multiplication factor due to the potential divider I have and there R4 parallel R5 divided by R3 plus R4 parallel R5. R4 is actually 4K, R5 is 5K. So, I should find out the parallel value of 4K and 5K. The simplest method you may recall we have discussed at earlier lectures is 4 into 5 divided by 4 plus 5. 4 into 5 is 20. 4 plus 5 is 9, 20 by 9 kilo ohm will be the answer for this and so that value I should evaluate and put it here divided by 3k plus again the same value. So, this will be the fraction of the voltage that will be applied at the input and that will be multiplying by the gain factor that I have here and if you do the simplification you find it is 4.26. So, the gain of the third channel is 4.26 by using the values of the resistor in the example. For the channel 4 again it is R of by R1 plus R2 1 that part is the same because it is a non inverting input and but the voltage divider that we have here is formed by R4 and R3 and R5 in coming in parallel. Therefore, R3 parallel R5 divided by R4 plus R3 parallel R5. So, this is the multiplication factor. Now, we apply all the known values of resistors R of is 6K, R1, R2 are 1K and 2K, R3, R5 are 3K and 5K and R4 is 4K. So, when you substitute with these values and calculate the effective gain, the gain factor is about 3.19. Again, you can see the positive sign. These two are positive sign because they are applied at the non-inverting input of the amplifier. So, Totally all the channel gains are shown here, A1 the channel 1 is minus 6, the channel 2 gain is minus 3 and channel 3 gain is 4.26 and the channel 4 gain is 3.19.
So, once we know the gains, we can apply different voltages V1, V2, V3, V4 and multiply appropriately by the corresponding gain factor and add them all together and that will be the voltage that you would get at the output. I would suggest that you should try this as a simple exercise and try to see whether you are able to measure the corresponding voltage in the lab when you have these values of resistors. So, so far what we have done is how you can have different types of uh, mathematical operations performed, summation and subtraction. The subtraction or the difference amplifier configuration I discussed two different types. One involving both the non-inverting and the inverting input, the other one involving two operational amplifier, one performing the inversion, the other performing the summation. I also showed a demonstration of the working circuit. Now, let us move on to the next mathematical operation. The next mathematical operation that we would like to discuss is integration. How an operational amplifier can be used to perform the mathematical operation of integration on an input signal is what we would take up now. You know why is integral of x dx or in this case actually with reference to time. Therefore, we output of an amplifier if it is k times integral of v in dt differentiation with reference to time. So, this is a uh, integration performed on the input voltage and k becomes a constant factor or the gain factor if you want. So, the output is proportional to the integ time integral of the input voltage. Therefore, this becomes a integration circuit. Now, it is already we have discussed the simple integrating circuit with networks. If you remember we talked about one resistor and a capacitor having been connected and if you take the voltage across the capacitor it becomes a lag network. We have already discussed it when we discussed about the frequency response of amplifiers we discussed this circuit with a simple RC configuration. If you apply the input between the R and C and take the output only across the C you will get a lag network because there is a phase lag introduced due to the RC. This also can be looked at as a filter circuit. You are applying a AC and you know what is the reactance offered by an AC for, of a capacitor to an AC signal. The reactance offered to a AC signal is 1 by omega C magnitude wise. So, where omega is 2 pi f where f is the frequency of the signal. So, you find 1 by omega c the frequency factor is coming in the denominator and therefore, if I increase the frequency the denominator becomes larger and larger and therefore, the effective voltage coming out of this will become smaller and smaller. So, what this is going to happen when the frequency is very low the capacitor offers large resistance when the frequency is increased the capacitor offers very low resistance and therefore, initially for low frequencies I will get enough voltage at the output because the value of this potential divider R and the X C the value of X C is large initially for low frequency. So, I will get very good voltage at the output, but as I increase the frequency you would find this reactance or the impedance offered by the capacitance will keep coming down and therefore, the output voltage will keep coming down. So, beyond some limit you would find very little output will be coming. Therefore, this circuit is called a low pass filter. It is able to pass the low frequencies. Low frequencies will pass in this filter and therefore, it is called a low pass filter. If I send high frequencies very little voltage will be passed at the output. It is also can be understood at high frequencies the capacitor offers very low reactance and therefore, they will short the all the voltages will go to the ground or complete the circuit using the capacitor. So, nothing will come across the load whatever that I connect beyond this point. So, this is a lag network we have seen under that it is also a low pass filter you should remember and it is also integration circuit. In principle when I take the output from the capacitor the circuit behaves like an integrator. How is that? Now, let us look at the simple mathematical expression that you already are familiar with. So, when I take the output using the potential divider R and C, if I take the output across the C or the X C here, 
ray reactance factor V output is equal to X C divided by R plus X C. But in terms of magnitude it will also have a phase because of the capacitance therefore in terms of magnitude it will be X C divided by root of R square plus X square times V in. So this is a factor by which V in will be multiplied to obtain the output this already we know. Now when I have the capacitor in the using an op amp how you can implement a integrating circuit you can just implement using the configuration that I have, I have shown on the screen. You have the R which is actually at the input resistance with a V in and the capacitor comes in the feedback loop you are connecting between the inverting and the output terminals. Now what is the output? The non inverting input is grounded so this is a very simple configuration of an operation amplifier integrator. You have connected the inverting input to ground therefore this point you know it is going to be the virtual ground virtual earth. So it is almost effectively equivalent to ground. So if I now measure a voltage at the output how do I measure a voltage? I measure output voltage between the output terminal and the ground all voltages are normally measured with reference to a common ground which I called earth or ground. So V output is measured with between this terminal and the ground terminal but this point is almost close to the ground terminal because this is a virtual earth point and therefore the V output actually is a voltage between the this terminal and this terminal at the inverting input. So but what is this that is nothing but the voltage across the capacitor due to the input signal. So the output voltage is nothing but the voltage that is developed across the capacitor that also we know here. So what is the output voltage across the capacitor you know the voltage across the capacitor is given by Q by C where Q is the charge in coulombs and C is the capacitance in farads. So the V output is equal to Q by C this is a well known expression from basic electricity. Now what is Q? Q is the charge and what is charge it is nothing but the total amount of current flowing for a finite time. So it is nothing but integral of I dt because I is what is current rate of change of rate of flow of charge I is equal to dQ by dt rate of flow of charge and therefore Q is equal to integral I dt collect the current flowing for a finite time and that gives you the total charge accumulated on the capacitor. So V across the capacitor Vc is equal to Q by C from the fundamentals of electricity and that is nothing but integral I dt divided by C. Now what is I? I is nothing but in this case because you have a virtual earth here if I apply V1, Vn what is the current? The current is V in by R none of the other component on the other side will affect this because this is a virtual ground. So the input current will be V in by R that is why we are writing here in place of the I we write V in by R into the DT by C we retain as such. Now there is an R here there is a C here these two are constants of the circuit and therefore I can take it out. So they are not going to be affected by the integration. So the output voltage which is actually the voltage across the capacitor we see is nothing but minus 1 by RC integral V in DT. V in is changing with time and therefore I it has to keep inside the integration so integral V in DT. So you can see output voltage is proportional to VC is equal to the VC the voltage across the capacitor and that is equal to minus 1 by RC integral of V in DT. So it is precisely the type of circuit that we wanted to design where output is an integral of the input time integral of the input. So this circuit will perform as an integrator okay how do you check whether it is performing like an integrator. If I give a sine wave what do you expect at the output what is an integral of a sine you know it is a cosine function. So 
it will again be a sine function you will not be able to see the difference of course there will be a phase difference but unless you take great care you will not be able to detect the change in the phase uh, everything will look alike a sine wave sine wave and cosine wave will look exactly identical except for the phase factor and therefore it becomes difficult for us to detect the integration performed on the input voltage therefore let us take a different waveform so one of the different waveform that we can take uh, take up is a square wave so uh, you can take a square wave and apply as the input for a finite frequency and a finite amplitude and then see what happens to the output voltage from the circuit now i have given you a very typical circuit of an integrator it is very similar to the basic integrator that we already discussed except for one or two small changes the changes are you can see i have added a high resistance 100k ohms in this case across the capacitor that i have used and the capacitor value is 0.1 microfarad the input resistance is 10k and i also connected almost equivalent to a resistor equivalent to 10k which is actually the value of the other resistor r1 in the resistor corresponding to the invert non inverting terminal also i will explain to you why i do that little later but basically this is to compensate for any differences in the input bias currents we add this additional resistor even without the resistor the circuit in principle should work well if it is a good op amp this 100k is basically added to make sure that initially the capacitor is fully discharged because there is a resistor path available even if there is any residual charge residing on the capacitor it will discharge through the 100k and therefore there will be no charge there when the input signal arrives at the input so that is the reason we use the 100k this is a circuit suggested by the manufacturer himself you you look at the data manual of 741 op amp you would find it does have a same circuit given as an application circuit by the manufacturer now let us look at how do we understand the uh, waveform that i give if i give a square wave this is the input waveform on the right side i have shown and with an amplitude of plus 5 to minus 5 so this is a plus 5 minus 5 amplitude square wave at 1 millisecond is a period that means it is 1 kilohertz frequency so i apply 1 kilohertz square wave at the input of the integrator and what do you get out you get out a triangular wave and you find the output amplitude is plus or minus 2.5 so maximum amplitude plus or minus 2.5 so when i give plus or minus 5 volt square wave at 1 kilohertz you get a plus or minus 2.5 triangular wave as the output if you perform integration but how do we know this is integration i'll briefly explain to you how it comes about so now let us understand what is the um, integral of a constant time integral of a constant v is equal to integral k dot dt where k is a constant because k is a constant i can take the k out therefore it becomes k integral dt and integral dt is very simple you can integrate it to be t and therefore v is equal to kt so this is the integrated value of the output so what is this k is a constant t is a time so if I, that as time goes the voltage keep increasing monotonically continuously with a slope equal to k so when i have a constant value if i integrate the constant value i get a linearly varying function at the output which is varying with reference to time so when i have a constant voltage of 5 volts at the input when i integrate it i should get a linear voltage slowly increasing from minus 2.5 to plus 2.5 with reference to time then once i reach this point suddenly the out input voltage because it is a square wave it becomes minus 5 volts from plus 5 volts so once that and remains constant at minus 5 volts so during that time again i should have the k has now become minus k that is all so you would find it will start decreasing 
at the steady rate depending on the value of k with a negative slope it reaches minus 2.5 once again during that period. Then again the input voltage increases to plus 5 volts and therefore the voltage starts increasing because now k has become positive the voltage starts increasing at the output. So you can see this zigzag or a triangular wave form is obtained whenever you give a square wave at the input. There is no change in the frequency, the frequency you can see both I have got the same frequency. So there is no frequency change, but you can see there is an amplitude change from plus 5 to minus 5 you now have plus 2.5 to minus 2.5. So you must be able to understand that also. Now let us take a typical example of that circuit that we discussed where the R which is connected in parallel to the capacitor is 10 k, C is 0.1 microfarad. The capacitance in the feedback is 0.1 and the RC time constant is this product of these two 0.1 and 10 k that comes to around 10 millisecond which is larger than the applied frequency. So I assume 1 kilohertz square wave is applied. So you should make sure that R that you use across the capacitor should have a time constant with reference to that capacitor much larger than the time period of the input signal. So substituting in the equation V output is equal to Vc is equal to minus 1 by Rc integral V in dt which is the expression for the output voltage from my integrator. So the integ it is what is 1 by Rc? R is 100k, C is 0.1 microfarad. When you multiply them, you get 1 by 10 power minus 3. Integral V in is 5 volts multiplied by dt, and the dt uh, you have to integrate for half the pulse 0 to uh, t by 2 because the, uh, we can also do for the whole, but this the, during the period you find the voltage goes from. Uh, 0 to 5 volts. So uh, the voltage V in therefore at that time is plus 5 volts multiplied by dt and therefore that is minus 1 by 10 power minus 3 into 5 into dt when I integrate it becomes t by 2, t by 2 is 0.5 millisecond, t the period is 1 millisecond therefore it is 0.5 millisecond, 10 power minus 3 corresponds to second, 10 power minus 3 second is 1 millisecond anyway. So if you calculate the voltage you find V output will be 2.5 volts. So the maximum voltage at the input when it is 5 volts the maximum voltage at the output is 2.5 volts. So you can actually perform a actual experiment also right now we will perform a simulation. Now you see you have a breadboard, you have a dual supply and you have a function generator which will generate different frequencies as well as different output voltages and on the right side I have an oscilloscope simulated on the screen. So this is a very familiar scheme you have already seen such demos earlier so let me do auto setup. So when I do auto setup the op amp and the various components will go automatically and position themselves on the breadboard and the rest of the wiring will be completed very quickly on its own automatically. Okay. Now the circuit is completed, you can see the feedback resistor is 10k here, 10k here and that is 100k. Now I will switch on the power supply, I switch on the function generator and I switch on the uh, oscilloscope. Now let me give some frequency let us say it is about 500 hertz and the output is around 1 volt. So I give a 1 volt 500 hertz input you see the output is actually a triangular wave with a square wave as the input you get a square uh, a triangular wave at the output you can also see approximately the amplitude is decreased by half. Now if I increase the frequency to 1 kilohertz you can see corresponding input output waveform. So you can see a simple square wave at 1 kilohertz becomes a triangular wave at half the amplitude. 
So, this is a demonstration of or simulation of the integrating circuit. Now, let us now we will close this and move on to the demo. We will now go to the demonstration lab table and show you the working circuit of an integrating circuit. Here I have the integrating amplifier, the circuit is seen here, it is exactly the same circuit which I showed you already. You have an op amp, you have a 10 k input resistor and you have a 100 k and a 0 0.1 microfarad connected in parallel along the feedback path and you have another 10 k connected to the negative the positive input or the inverting non inverting input I have already told you this is connected in order to take care of the input bias current variations and this is to provide a time for the charges across the capacitor to discharge and be ready to receive the next pulse. So, this is going to be a function generator you see here a function generator this output can be used for measuring either the amplitude or the frequency. So, you have the amplitude variation and the frequency variation knobs here. The output of this is connected to the input of this op amp circuit shown on the breadboard you have the 741 IC here and this 100 k 10 k all the resistors are connected and the output is connected to the oscilloscope. Both the input and the output are connected to the two channels of the oscilloscope. So, I hope you are able to see the square wave which is generated from this function generator. Now, I slightly change the output amplitude you can see the output is changing when I change the thing and you can see I have selected square wave here where square wave, triangular wave, sawtooth wave different type of wave functions can be generated. I have now pressed the square wave therefore, it is generating square wave and here I can select the frequency range I have pressed the 1 k here therefore, it is generating 1 kilohertz square wave approximately and that is what is seen on the oscilloscope here. You only see two dashed lines top and bottom and the vertical line is not seen because it is too fast. So, it is basically a square wave continuously moving up and down. So, that is the input signal. The output signal is connected to the other channel and you can see the triangular wave coming on the screen. So, this is the output because it is an integrated output of the input voltage and when I apply a square wave I must get a triangular wave at the output and that is what I get here. Now, I will try to reduce the gain. Right. Now, you can see uh, the triangular wave and the square wave separately very well and if I change the frequency you can see there is a change for example, I will go to 10 kilohertz that is too fast of course. So, you can see when I change the frequency you would find for a very large range of frequencies I still have the triangular wave as such without any distortion. Similarly, and you can also see as I increase the frequency the amplitude of the square wave is almost constant. The amplitude of the square wave is almost constant, but the amplitude of the triangular wave keep decreasing. Why is it happening like that? So, you know when I increase the frequency 1 by omega c the omega is in the denominator and therefore, the gain starts coming down and therefore, the output becomes smaller and smaller as I increase the frequency. So, even here you can see it is almost triangular. So, over a wide range of frequencies, but you cannot go to very high frequencies if you go to very high frequencies it will not be all that nice because you also know that this is basically a filter circuit. So, it is a low pass filter therefore, low frequencies it will be able to pass and high frequencies it will not be able to pass well the reactance becomes very very small and therefore, the output voltage becomes too small and therefore, you will not be able to operate the circuit at very high frequencies, but basically right now this circuit is used for performing integration and therefore, you are able to see that when I give a square pulse I get a triangular wave. Uh, if I change this 
to a sine wave you can see you also get a sine wave because integration of a sine wave is also a cosine function but that cannot be seen unless I uh, lock them and see the phase difference. So you do see a slight shift in the phase but it is not completely clear because unless you lock them or synchronize the two signals we will not be able to measure the exact phase difference that is produced. But in principle you can see both of them are sine wave when I go to square wave you find one of them is a square wave the output becomes the triangular wave. So this uh, corresponds to the integration of the input voltage. So we can obtain the function of integration by using simple RC without the op amp. The, I have already told you in the earlier case for example this circuit which you see on the screen is basically a simple integrating circuit only with R and C then why do we require op amp. So if I have only this circuit you can see that the output can never be larger than the input because it becomes a potential divider and I am measuring the output uh, obtaining the output from one of the term one of the uh, reactances that I have here two reactances. Therefore you would find it will always be a fraction of the input it can never be larger whereas when I go to an op amp I had several advantages over that. What is the advantage that I have here first I get the concept of the virtual earth coming here therefore the input and the output are perfectly isolated. The input generates V in by R as a current because this is a ground point. The output is measured between this point and this point this also is a ground virtual ground therefore that is the voltage developed across the capacitor. So I can choose any current here without uh, being affected by the presence of capacitor I can change the voltage here or the resistor here and obtain different currents. So this is a great advantage compared to a simple RC circuit right. So you find operational amplifier enormously improves the performance of a normal uh, integrator. The other point I wanted to perhaps mention to you is if I choose my R and C appropriately for example if I choose R as 1 mega ohm and C as 1 microfarad what is the value of RC? R is 1 mega ohm C is 1 microfarad 1 mega ohm means 1 into 10 power 6 ohm 1 microfarad means 1 into 10 power minus 6 farad. So when I multiply this you would find the 10 power minus 6 and 10 power plus 6 will cancel each other and I will just get 1 second as the time constant. So in this expression V output is equal to Vc is equal to 1 by Rc integral you find the multiplication factor becomes 1 because Rc is now 1 for this choice of R and C and therefore output is integral of input directly. But if I chose R and C in such a way that I will get a finite value for 1 by Rc for example instead of <coughs> 1 mega ohm I choose 10 mega ohm. So 10 mega ohm and 1 microfarad will give me a factor of 10 at the denominator. So it will be 0 0.1 times the integrator will be multiplied by a factor 0.1. So there is attenuation. But instead if I use 100 k in place of 1 meg it will be 10 power 5 then I will get a factor 10 in the numerator that means it will be 10 times the integrated value that I will get at the output. So in principle I can increase the gain of the integrator by the choice of RC values and therefore I can get here gain as well as attenuation in this case which is not possible when I use discrete R and C circuit. In conclusion you would remember we have done you have simple difference amplifier and an integrating circuit we discussed the working of the difference amplifier the integrating circuit uh, amplifier and also showed a demonstration of a operational amplifier based integrator. In the next lecture perhaps we will take up a differentiating circuit and show you how a differentiating circuit can be constructed. Thank you. Mm -hmm.